Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, today, uh, I'm very happy also before God also who gave us this precious time to meet this morning with all uh, members to share the heart of God. First, let us open the Bible. First uh, King chapter nine. First King chapter nine from verse one. And it came to pass when Solomon had finished building the house of the Lord and the, house, the king's house and all Solomon's desire, which he wanted to do, that the Lord appeared to Solomon the second time as he had appeared to him at Gibbon. And the Lord said to him, I have, he I have heard your prayer and your supplications that you have made before me. I have consecrated this house which you have built to put my name there forever, and my eyes and my heart will be there perpetually. Now, if you were before me as your father David walked, in integrity, gritty of heart and in unrightness to do according to all that I have commanded you. And if you keep my statutes and my judgment, then I will establish the throne of your kingdom over Israel forever. As I promised, baby, your father saying, you shall not fail to have a man on the throne of Israel. But if you or your son at all turn from following me and do not keep my commandment and my statutes, which I have set before you, but go and serve other God and worship them, then I will cut off Israel from the land which I have given them and this house which I have consecrated for my names, I will cast out of my side. Israel will be a proverb and by word among all peoples and all and as for this house which is exer exerted everyone who pass by it will be astonished and will hish and say why has the lord done thus to this land and to this house yeah Uh, every morning, uh, I thank God uh, give us this precious time to meditate the heart of God uh, together with uh, our brothers and sisters. Uh, I'm not the one uh, who can uh, catch the heart of God very well or who understand the heart of God very well, but all of us, uh, we need his grace and mercy. And by the grace of God, I believe that up to where God shows us, we are able to see and check the heart of God through this word of God. And today, when I was reading <clears throat> whole chapter 9, uh, this ch chapter 9, first it got appeared uh, before Solomon after he finished it to build the house of the Lord and also his kingdom, his house. And also we are able to see, uh, also he began other construction of other uh, kingdom, other city, and also providing some part to the Hiram, King Hiram. But today I was focusing uh, how God appeared before Solomon and also how he won to Solomon. That is what I was meditating and also I want to share uh, with our brothers and sisters. Uh, first, we are able to see uh, there is a time when God appeared to Solomon. So if you see this Bible, verse 1. And it came to pass when Solomon had finished building the house of the Lord and the king's house. And all Solomon's desire, which he wanted to do, the Lord appeared to Solomon the second time, right? Yeah. 
So now you can see that when God appeared to Solomon, there is a time when Solomon had finished the building of the house of the Lord and king's house. And also all Solomon's desire, which he had, which he wants to do. And God appeared before Solomon, right? Uh, because really I remember <clears throat> there is a time, there is a time, uh, possibly he built the Masan church. You know, Masan church is very, very big church, but not only just he built, not only just build a big church, he built with so many testimony because he testified how God has been working, how God provide money, how God solved the problem with the city hall, like uh, the city hall. And there was so many challenges, but he was able to testify how God solved all those problem trials with the people's trial with the city hall. And also, how God gave him grace, providing all the material, provide money. So he finished so many testimonies. And then pass apart, the, you know, the day, the day when they have a ceremony of the new church building. And the pass apart was asking Pastor Lee, Pastor Lee, after finish these constructions, uh, do you have a heart to fill a uh, a kind of satisfaction in your heart or feel like some joy, like feel that you did something well. Did you have such kind of heart in your heart? That is what Pastor Park asked Pastor Lee. And Pastor Lee said that Pastor, the other time, my family member uh, came to uh, this place. And because many times my family members despise him and his church because Oh, oh, you know, sometimes people, they despise according to our appearance. So the, their, the, his relative and family member despise him, despise church. But this time after they visiting us, they visit us and see how the construction is going on and how church built. And really they surprised, wow. Oh, my nephew, my, my, my niece. Hmm? Oh, my nephew, Hummok Lee, you are doing well. Wow, you're a great man. I thought that you're a small church pastor, but now I can see you are very, very big church pastor. So, you know, he, when he heard about this and also how God was working for the construction, so really he feel that there is just a small heart. He got that some certification in his heart. You know, the time, the time he listened, the time Pasabak listened about this, Pasabak changed his face and he rebuked Pastor Lee that, oh, Pastor Lee, if you have such kind of a heart, you must fail in your ministry. You must ruin in your life. That is what, eh? that is what he said. Eh? Really, if you have such kind of heart, you must fail. You must fail. So the time Pastor Park rebuked him a lot. And also, Pastor Park, whenever he go to other church, he continually give this testimony to all the church in Korea. If you go to Seoul, Busan, Gwangju, Daejeon, wherever he go, he said that, yes, there is a Pastor Lee who after he built the church, and he has such kind of a heart, he must fail, he must fail, he must fail. But really, uh, the time, uh, even though he doesn't want to listen continually, but really through this, Pasali, he was able to check his heart and really he clear and arrange in his heart. So everyone, even in our life, when we have done something well, when we achieve something, when we did something for the work of God, or when sometimes we offering before God a lot, when we work for the church a lot, when I receive the grace, when I have done something great work for God. So, you know, that time easily, easily we could have, easily, easily 
we could have some trust to mind and exert heart is arising. Is it right? Also for me, even though I'm a pastor, but after I preach the word of God and after I fellowship whole day, then automatically I feel that now at least I can last a little bit. I can relax a little bit. Do you understand what I'm saying? Even you remember David, the time he committed sin, also after he finished so many words and he was able to relax in that way. Everyone in the same way, all of us, I think we are all same. After we have done something great, after we have done something for God, then easily, automatically in our heart, we want to have heart to relax and we want to rest. We want to serve our flesh. And also I saw many brothers and sisters in the beginning, they are able to serve gospel with a humble heart, with lower heart. But the time they receive the grace of God and they come well, they got well, then easily, easily, they lose their heart. They lose their heart. And also they start to trust and exert their heart and they despise others. Sometimes they despise church. Sometimes they despise servant of God and also despise other fellow brothers and sisters. So I saw how many people, they go in that way. Is it right? Yes, it is a true. Satan easily, easily deceive in our heart and really uh, trust our heart and make us trust our heart and uh, exhort our heart when after we have done something well, after we receive the grace of God. And now I can see that this is the time when God appeared to Solomon, when after he finished the house of the Lord and also his king's house, right? And also he finished all the desire which he wants to do. After he finished everything, I can see that that is a time when God appeared to the Solomon. And now you can see that first he remind him, he remind him. First he remind him. I have heard your prayer and your supplications that you have made before me. I have consecrated this house which you have viewed to put my name there forever and my eyes and my heart will be there per perpetually. Now, if you work before me as your father, David worked in integrity of heart and in unrightness to do according to all that I have commanded and I will keep, if you keep my statutes, my judgment, then I will establish the throne of your kingdom over Israel forever. As I promised David, your father saying, you shall not fear to have man on the throne of Israel. So really he promised, he give them the clear the assurance and if he can continually follow and uh, follow and serve God. And so really he promised like this. Yes, of course, he prayed. It is not come according to his condition. He was standing before God. He was praying before God according to the promise and covenant which God had made with the Father David. That's why he continued to show that, yes, that is what he's going to do. But now, um, but God warned Solomon from verse 6, if you or your son at all turn from following me and do not keep my commandment and my statutes, which I have set before you, but go and serve other God and worship them. So now uh, he explained, he explained the time you left from him, the time we left from God. Instead of following God, instead of follow serving God, we follow this word, we serve our flesh, we serve this word. And that is the time when God is so angry and he's so angry towards us. 
Verse 7, I will cut off Israel from the land which I have given them. And this house which I have consecrated for my name, I will cast out of my sight. Israel will be a proverb and by word among all people. So now what he said that there is a time when we, instead of follow God, we follow other God and do not follow the guidance of God and serve my flesh, serving this world, serving other God and worship them. Then he said clearly, I will cut off from, I will cut off Israel from the land which he, they, have, they have given, which they received. And also, God, this house, this house which I have consecrated for my name, even this house of the Lord, even this temple of God, even this house which I have consecrated for my name, what he say, I will cast out from out of my sight. And then how other people say, for this house which he is exerted, everyone who pass by, it will be astonished and will hiss and say, why have the Lord done thus to this land, to this house? Verse 9, then they will say, sir, because they have forsook the Lord their God who brought their fathers out of the land of Egypt and have embraced other God and worship them and serve them. Therefore, the Lord has brought all these calmly on them. So really, when I was reading this word of God, I was shocked in my heart. Oh, really, I can see that what God is happy, no matter how we are weak, how we are evil, how we are dirty. Yes, our weakness is no problem. Our luckiness is no problem. Is it right? But what is the problem? Problem is, you know, problem is, yet we are the one who is weak, yet we are the one who is lacking. But problem is, our problem is no problem. But problem is, instead of serving God and following God, we follow this world, we serve this world, we serve our own flesh, we live for my flesh. That is what God is so angry. And then he said that the time they follow, not me, they follow the, land, the, the, the other God, then what he said, he's going to chase away this Israel from the land which they have received. And he said that, even if this is the house of the Lord, temple of the Lord, he will destroy it. He will be removed from his eyes. Is it right? That is a clear heart of God is there. So now what people say when they saw when they saw what people say, they will answer, they will answer. They will answer because they forsook the Lord their God who brought their father out of land of Egypt and have embraced other God worship them, serve them. Right? What about? Because if you see all oh, Israel, yes, God will do it. But what about if God connect, if we connect our story? Let's say, uh, because brother Drake forsook the Lord, their God, who brought their father out of the land of Egypt. It means that he come out, out of the land of Egypt. It means that we are saved from the sin. Is it right? God saved us from the sin. God saved Israel from the land of Egypt. It means that God saved us from our sin. So if Bible says that, oh, Drake, brother Drake, forsake the God of his God. And who brought Drake from uh, out of the sin? But uh, Drake embarrassed this word and his flesh desire and worship this world and sub his flesh. Therefore, God has brought all this calamity on Brother Drake. So if we read like this, how it is so serious. Yes, 
Oh, Brother Charles Ruanga forsake God who saved Ruanga from his sin, who saved him from the power of Satan, but he embarrassed other God, he embarrassed, he worshiped the world, he served his flesh. Therefore, God has brought all this calamity on Brother Charles Ruanga. Yes, when I connect with my story, I can see that yet God has brought out of Israel. Yet God saved me from the sin. God saved me from the word. God saved me from the power of Satan. Is it right? Yet God has saved us from the sin, but really in our life, easily, easily, again, we follow this word. Again, we serve our flesh. We serve our this word. Isn't it really how really we are able to see this? Yet God brought us from the power of darkness, power of Satan. He saved us from sin. Right? But really we can see that if we serve this world, if we serve other God, it means serve my flesh. Some people serve there. There is something which they like. Huh? Really, if the, the brother and sister who receive salvation just serving according to this word, really God, he said that even if this is the house of the Lord, he is ready to, to break down, just removed from his eyes. Isn't it? Even if yeah, it is like um, Israel, they are staying in land of Israel, but even he want to chase them away, right? So really, I can see that how this heart of God, it is not just something for warning, but really it was a true. Is it right? You remember how Israel, they have been passing so many challenges because they, what they did, they despise this world. People, they despise this word of God, even this warning. Is it right? This warning. I don't know in the heart of Solomon, really this word put in his heart and keep his heart? I don't think so. Really, you remember according to history. history. Eh? What happened? Really, uh, Israel, they, they are chased away. They lost their land. They chased away. They all scattered in the whole world. Is it right? And also the house of the Lord, they are taken over by Palestine yeah. and really how <laughs> you can see that how that house uh, uh, how that house of the Lord perish because they despise this warning from God in the same way as God is warning in our life. Amen. God is asking in our life. Yes, according to the promise which I have, I'm ready to work for you. Yes, I'm ready to do it. But if you <clears throat> exert your heart and learning away, not following me and following this word, not serving me, you serve your flesh desire, then even if uh, this is the house of the Lord, I'm ready to forsake. I'm ready to throw it away, right? Even if they are in the land of the promise, but they can chase away, right? So really we can see a clear and strong heart of God and strong the word of God and warning for this in our life. So also not only this is for the Solomon, really I believe that this word of God it is for us even in our heart. So that I hope that uh, the brothers and sisters and pastors, really we are able to see the clear heart of God and really we can remember in our heart how is the heart of God towards our life. Yeah, thank you so much. We finish here. Thank you.